99% of the time, our buildings are operating at 80% load or less. If we design our buildings based on full load, we, have, we lose a lot of opportunity for savings because the best efficiency point is typically at the design point of the application. So we should actually be designing for 80% and then allowing the use of excess energy for the last 1% of operation where we are exceeding those 80% uh, low points. Uh, because there are differences between what you can save in different types of buildings. And this has to do with the low profile. Because if you look at a data center, it is operational 24 seven. But when you look at the actual data load on a data center, the peak loads are during the working hours of the companies because they carry the biggest data loads. Then we have another peak in the evening time when you and I are streaming and, and looking at the different uh, services, Netflix and so on, because it has a, lo a lot of data usage. So there, there is a certain trend that you can see when you look at the low profile for a data center. It's not a flat curve at the peak either. So actually you have a variability, but when you compare to a residential building, for instance, there's a lot of activity in the morning. There's a lot of activity in the evening, but in the middle of the day, you will have a much lower consumption because under normal circumstances, people will be at work and then they will come back in the evening and they'll start cooking and they'll maybe charge their electric vehicles and that generates a certain peak in the consumption and then they go to bed. Over time, different solutions have been developed where you can really optimize the way you create the flow the, to avoid the turbulences. A lot of the losses that you have in a fan wheel, for instance, is because of turbulences in the airflow. Now, by doing that, you can have mechanical dampers, you can have inlet guide wings, you can also control the flow by controlling the pitch of the fan. However, even when you have these optimized mechanical solutions for controlling your flow, the energy efficiency of the system is always going to be best when you have the variable speed applied. When you have a connection which is rigid, meaning you have a motor connected directly into your fan wheel, there is no loss between the motor and the, and the fan. If you introduce a belt drive, there are losses in the belt drive. So, so that's a huge opportunity that we need to look at in the industry. How can we get the last pieces of equipment away from the belt driven solutions and into direct drive solutions. So we need to drive requirements. We need to drive legislation in a direction where these additional unnecessary losses get eliminated. Um, so, so that's definitely uh, one of the, the big opportunities that we have. If you look at a typical building, then about 40% of the electrical energy that a building consumes actually goes to the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning of the building. When we look at these types of loads, then a lot of the energy is consumed by pumps and fans and compressors. These pumps and fans and compressors have historically been controlled by dampers and valves, which obstruct the flow. So if instead you look at reducing the capacity by reducing the speed of the pump or fan, there's a substantial savings opportunity, which can be up to 60% on the application level. So some of the easy wins, of course, is that, I mean, changing an installation that it already is in place in a building and applying a variable frequency drive is actually not that difficult. All you need to do is you need to rewire the motor so that the mains connection that you have already goes through the drive. It's three wires to the drive, three wires to the motor. And in addition to this, you can look at your motors. Oftentimes the building we have today actually still have IE2 and IE1 motors installed, but we have today available IE5 motors, which has a reduction in the losses compared to the old generations of 40%. They have variable frequency drives already installed. A lot of buildings have looked at retrofitting and, and improving the efficiency by also adding better motors. And furthermore, 90% of all the buildings we have today will still be around in 2050. 
So if we want to reach sustainability goals by 2030 or 2050, we have to do something about the existing building mass because 45% of the energy that we have and that we use is actually used in our urban environment. So I see a lot more focus coming in that will look at the energy performance of existing buildings. I see governments already providing support to energy improvements in the existing built environment. And, and that is a way we have to go. So we need the building owners to really look at their buildings, to look at where could there be energy inefficiencies and talk to companies like ABB uh, about how can we maybe help them do these evaluations and provide proposals for solutions that they can then implement. And also quite often, actually, you'll see that these solutions have a, real, a rather short payback for the end users because, well, as said, I mean, the building is going to be around probably for another 30 years. So if you've already paid back the investment in the energy efficiency in one and a half years, well, the rest of the 28 years is just free of charge and you actually start making more money or saving a lot of the cost that you had. And that, of course, is a benefit to all. And then at the same time, we help the environment and we create a more sustainable urban environment for everyone.